Welcome back to the channel everybody, I'm Dino. Have you ever wanted one of those remote fuel reservoirs to run your motorcycle or snowmobile with the stock fuel tank off of the piece of equipment? Well, I have for a lot of years, but the cost of them has been a little bit prohibitive to me. However, right now I have a need for one, and I've been looking online and found a few simple ways to make one of these things for a relatively inexpensive amount of money. So today, I'm going to show you how to do that as we build one of these things together today on Dino's Tinker Shed. It's ought to be fun. Now I have been looking at remote fuel tanks for a number of years, but I've never really needed one um, for, for working on any piece of equipment up until now. Now as you can see, the carburetor's out of my DR650 and it's up on the bench, but very shortly I'll be reinstalling this and I want to tune it a little bit. I'm going to be putting in ProCycle's jet kit into the carburetor and I want to be able to run the motorcycle. Now, I could easily put either the stock fuel tank back on here or the safari tank to get fuel to the carburetor, but those are both a little bit cumbersome and they restrict access to the bike area or the carburetor area itself. So one of those remote reservoirs that holds about a liter of fuel would be really, really convenient. Now, as I said, I've priced these things out there around $70 or $80 online to buy one of these. But I've seen a few videos and read a few articles on how to make one of these things out of various different materials. So today, we're going to look at how to construct one of these on the cheap for around $15 that will actually work for what we need it to do, be reasonably inexpensive, and be a fun project to tinker on here in the shed. Okay, let's take a look at what parts that I've sourced. All right, most of the components that I bought, well, I got them from the Home Depot. And the one thing that the actual reservoir itself, I got from the dollar store. So I found this stainless steel water bottle for $4 at the dollar store. So it has a very nice cap. It's single walled, which is what I want. Um, and uh, it's stainless steel for four bucks. So this will become our hanging uh, fuel tank. We'll drill a hole in the bottom. We'll put a petcock or a shut off in it. And um, we'll be able to hang that from the ceiling and fuel the bike. Now, some of the other things that we got is I didn't have an actual petcock. So I looked for a basically a quarter turn brass uh, quarter turn stop valve here that we'll use as our petcock. Now it is a brass ball valve or brass with stainless steel ball valve in it. So it says it's oil resistant and fuel resistant. So it should work quite well. That will just get put into the bottom of here. I got an assortment of different fittings just to see. I spent, I think this was the most expensive part. This was $9.99 or, or $10, something like that, $10.50. And then the assorted uh, furls that go on the end here, they were like two or three dollars a piece. So I probably spent about fifteen dollars in total parts here, and another four, so twenty bucks. Now <clears throat> I always have JB Weld in stock, but I'm out of it right now. So yes, I had to buy another thing of JB Weld, but I normally have this in the shop anyway. It's it's something that most people have. And this time I bought the Marine Weld. It's the exact same price, but it says right on it that it is chemical and fuel resistant. And that's what we're gonna use to fasten the petcock into the bottom of the bottle. Now we're gonna need to do a bit of prep work on this. I think this blue on here is actually a sticker. I'm not 100% sure, but even if it's anodized, I'm gonna sand the bottom of this and clean that back up to bare metal so the JB Weld will really stick well to it. And then we'll have to come up with a way to suspend it. I'm thinking maybe a band clamp around here 
with a loop of either machinist wire or maybe even a thick zip tie that would make a nice long loop that we can hang the uh, bottle from. Now I think I'll also look at tapping a hole through here or, or drilling a hole through the cap itself so that I can put a motorcycle vent cap, one of those little red ones on the top that will give some air into the bottle. The other option is basically just to unscrew the cap to let air in while the, the unit's working. Now I'm not planning on storing fuel in this. I'll only fill it when I need it and then I'll drain it back out into the main fuel tank when I'm done with it. So I'm not really too worried about leaks or, or things like that over long-term storage. Okay, let's take a look a little bit closer at this and get this thing together. It shouldn't take too long and uh, we'll be in business. Okay, let's do it. So I'm gonna peel off this shrink wrapped sticker on here. It's, there's no glue. I'll just use my X-Acto knife and I'll peel it off and it reveals this beautiful blue motif. Now the end cap is painted, it's not a sticker. So I'll use a 60 grit disc on my die grinder and I'll take the majority of the paint off with that. And once I get it sort of to where I like it, then I'll switch out the sanding disc for a Scotch-Brite pad, just to get the remainder of any uh, paint or adhesive off of there. So I'll scrub this up nice, nice. And then I need to look at drilling a hole through the bottom for the petcock. So I'll start right in the center here with a small eighth inch drill bit, just as a pilot bit that I'll chase up with a step drill. And I'll drill through here. And of course, it's a double bottom. So that decorative blue cap there, it's a cap. So it's actually double walled. So I'm going to have to get that off. Imagine it's glued on there. So I might try just heating it up. Now that I've got a hole in the bottom, I can maybe pop it off or something. I'll see. But I'm going to need to get to the actual stainless part there. I can see it. I just need to get to it. It's always complicated. So I'll just use my map gas torch here to heat up any glue that might be in the cap. And my thought was, well, I'll just grab a hold of that with my welding gloves here and try to twist it off like a jam lid. <laughs> a little bit hot. Ooh. Okay. This thing seems to want to stay on there. So I think my next step will be to actually uh, cut the, a circle out of the bottom there. I'll just use a grinding disc and see if I can get a relatively decent looking uh, piece of work there to get to that second bottom and it'll still be flat then. And I don't know. We'll see, it's starting to become a hack job already. Eventually I just cut a square out with my angle grinder and that gave me access to the pilot hole that I drilled earlier. Now, when we look at the actual petcock itself, it's three pieces. It has the main body and the brass nipple and then a furl that goes on the other end. And the way these work is when they're across like this, the fuel's off and when they're like this, they're on. I wanna make sure I get the uh, nipple on the right side. So I'll use a little Teflon tape and yes, I wrapped it in the wrong direction on this particular one. That's why it's unraveling a little bit. But once I get it threaded in there, I'm not really worried about these threads, so I'll just clamp them into a pipe wrench and I'll, uh, I'll tighten it down so they're nice and snug. Next, I'll measure the size of the actual nipples threads. And I'm gonna take my step drill and find the closest actual step in the drill and I'll tape that off to give me a bit of a visual so I don't drill too deep with this thing. Next, I'll just drill in there until I reach that mark. And you'll see it looks really good, but it's still a little bit too small for this to cut its own threads. So what I'll do is I'll get my tap set out and I'll just get the right diameter of tap. I'm not really too worried about the thread pitch. And I'll thread the bottom of this hole. Now remember, it's just sheet metal. It's only gonna have one, maybe two threads at most in this sheet metal. It's just enough to get that nipple to start threading in. And you can see it looks pretty good. And sure enough, when I try it, well, it fits right in. Look at that, it's good. Okay, before I go too much further, I'm gonna clean my work area up. So I'll clean up all the tools 
and I'll take off this rag and I'll take it outside and shake it off. And I'm also going to blow out the inside of the actual water bottle. I don't want any kind of chips or any kind of debris in there that could get into the fuel line. And once this is done, I'll just put a fresh rag down and I'll start by threading in the nipple and it goes in nice and tight. It's actually surprising how good it fits. I'll put a spring clamp on the end and then I'll just set it straight up and down so I can put the JB weld in. Now before I put the JB weld, I'm going to use some acetone. This is the approved product for cleaning with JB weld. They don't like alcohol or brake cleaner. And I'll just pop open these new JB welds that I bought. Now this stuff's very similar to any other epoxy. I put two stripes of black and two equal stripes of the uh, white. And then you really want to blend this stuff together well. So take your time until it's completely homogenous and just keep stirring. And eventually it'll reach a nice dark gray color like this. You know you've mixed it really, really well. So I'll just use a couple wooden sort of sticks that I got from my basement. And I'll pack the stuff down in around the threads. And this did prove to be a little bit challenging because of that cap. But eventually, I think I got enough down there that it would seal the threads up nice and make it fluid proof. And you can see here, I've got it tucked down in pretty good. Now, because it's minus 11 out, I'm going to bring it downstairs into the basement where it's warm. And what I'll do is I'll use my drill press as a little bit of a clamp. I'll bring the quill down, and then I'll use the quill lock to hold it there. And this is mostly just to keep it from moving around, but I think it turned out pretty good. Gotta love that motif. So the next day arrived, and I came down just to have a look and see how the JB Weld turned out. Now, I'm quite pleased with this. Overall, when I was looking at it, it really did appear that it is well hardened up and uh, in good shape. So I took it over and filled it up with a little bit of water just to see if it was watertight. And as I looked around, you know what? It looks really good. Well, that worked really good. The bottle holds water. It's completely watertight. There was no seepage at all on the bottom. And the JB Weld is nice and hard. It's been, well, almost, almost 24 hours now. It does take a while for this stuff to harden. And that's the reason I'm down here in the basement, obviously. Now, you may have noticed that the bottom is now cut off flush. And I had to do this while I was putting the JB Weld in. After I got it down there and I filmed it a little bit, I really wasn't pleased with how smooth it was and I was worried that I might get some leaks. So I tried to get in there a little bit better, got some goo on my fingers and then I didn't want to touch the camera in case I get JB Weld on the camera. So what I did is I just took the grinder and I ran it along here and cut off the bottom completely and you can kind of see that maybe right here. Um, it's pretty good. I'm going to deburr the bottom of it. Just it, It's not too sharp, but I don't want to ever get cut working on something like this. So I'll get working on that, and then we'll get on to the next step. You know, it's pretty warm down here in my wood shop, so I think I'll just finish the project up down in here. So the fuel tank holds water. It's sealed well. There's just a couple things left to do. I need to attach this barb fitting, and I, I have two different sizes here. I'm gonna use the smaller of the two, and I need to attach that obviously to a little bit of Tigon fuel line so that I can basically hook it up to the carburetor. I also need to attach this small fuel tank vent to the top of the cap here. I'll just drill a hole in there, and I will super glue that in. And then I need a way to hang this. So I think what I'll do is, use a band clamp there's like a little shoulder here and I'll actually put some zip ties in there and make a loop around the top to hang this from why don't we get started by actually installing the uh, 
little barb fitting here. Let's do that. So I'm going to put some Teflon tape around the barb fitting and you'll notice I actually put it on in the right direction this time so that when you thread it into the actual fitting, well, the Teflon tape won't unravel. Now I'll just use a couple wrenches here and we'll tighten it up nice. There, that should work. And then I'll slide the Tigon fuel line on and secure that with a fuel line clamp. This should be nice and fuel tight. Now for the loop, I decided I'm going to use a nylon zip tie and I want to put another end on the other side. So I take another zip tie, I slide it on and then I'll trim off the excess material like this. And what this does essentially is gives me a strap with two ball ends. I'll take that strap and I'll fold it into a loop and I'll pass it through a band clamp that in turn fits over the top of the water bottle really, really well. Once I get it where I want it, I'll just tighten it down with a screwdriver and it makes a really, really secure hanging feature here. And I'll just check to make sure the cap fits on and it does really good. Now this cap does need some form of venting. I need to drill a hole through it and I've decided I'm going to use a piece of, of line here, a fuel line with a motocross vent on the top of it. There's also an internal cap that I need to drill through, so I'll use my drill press and I'll drill from the inside out. This gives me a pilot hole to the outside and also just a small vent hole in the plastic itself. Once I've got this done, I'll take that little piece of fuel line and I'll get a relatively similar sized drill bit and I'll drill from the outside in so that I enlarge the hole through the stainless steel. Next, after I clean out all the shavings, I'll actually use a little bit of super glue, like caulking, to seal that fuel line into the top of the blue cap. Now this, I always buy my super glue in packs of five from the dollar store. It keeps it fresh, and this stuff works really good to seal this stuff up. Looks great. Well, that wraps up today's episode on building this auxiliary fuel tank. I think it turned out really good. The zip tie loop up top is good and strong and it feels really solid. The vent cap works really well, I've tested it. It only allows air in, it won't allow any kind of air or vapors out of the bottle, which probably means it's fully sealed. Now, the petcock works really good. But I have been reading a little bit online where they suggest you put a petcock down closer to the carburetor with just a small tail of fuel line. And the reason for this makes a lot of sense. When I close it off up here and pull it off the carburetor, well I have four feet of fuel line right now that's going to drain out all over the floor. If I have a petcock down here, there's just an inch or two of fuel line that could potentially leak and uh, spill out. So I'll probably add a second petcock on the bottom. This was really, really easy to make. In total, it cost me about $20 to make it, and you can do this in your garage or in your tinker shed and have yourself a great auxiliary fuel bottle. Now, until next time, I hope you liked a little tour of my wood shop here today. Uh, it's another spot that I spend a fair bit of time in, and I'll see you soon again outside in Dino's Tinker Shed. You have a great day. I can't wait to try this out.